Chapter 32, Trisolaris, the Listener. Once upon a time in the distant world of Trisolaris, there existed a series of listening posts dedicated to detecting signs of intelligent life in the universe. These posts were manned by dedicated listeners who spent their lives in a constant state of solitude within the narrow confines of their tiny spaces. One such listener, stationed at post 1379, looked out of his window into the desolate Trisolarian world, feeling the deep loneliness of midnight. However, on this particular day, everything changed for the listener. As he glanced at the waveform display, he noticed a peculiar radio signal that carried the unmistakable markings of an intelligent transmission. The signal had an unprecedented recognizability rating of red 10, indicating a high likelihood of containing self-interpreting coding system. With anticipation, the listener opened the resulting document and read a message from another world, Earth. The message expressed a desire to establish contact and work together towards a better future in the vast universe. The listener's excitement and thrill knew no bounds as he imagined the paradise like Earth and the possibilities that awaited. But as the transmission ended and the listener returned to the harsh reality of his existence, he realized that the message had brought about a potential change in his life. Trisolaris would undoubtedly reduce the number of listening posts, and the outdated ones would be the first to be cut. He faced the grim prospect of unemployment and eventual dehydration if he couldn't find another job within a certain time frame. The listener's only hope for escape lay in finding a mate, as Trisolarans had the ability to renew their bodies by combining organic material through mating. However, his low social position, advanced age, and isolated lifestyle made this prospect seem impossible. He had resigned himself to a life of endless loneliness, devoid of any meaning or purpose. But the Earth message had sparked a glimmer of hope in him. Determined to save his own existence, he made a daring decision. He responded to the message, knowing that the Trisolaran government would ultimately destroy humans and take over the planet as the new Trisolaran home. With trembling fingers, he pressed the transmit button, sending a radio wave carrying a message to Earth that read, Do not answer. Do not answer. Do not answer. Meanwhile, in the grandeur of the Princeps residence, the news of the listener's warning message reached the highest echelons of Trisolaran hierarchy. The Princeps, concerned about the listener's actions, summoned him and questioned his motives. The listener calmly explained that he wanted his life to have meaning beyond mere survival. Even though he may have cost the Trisolaran civilization a chance of survival, he has gifted Earth the same chance. The Princeps, although voicing his concerns about the dangerous nature of Earth's civilization, ultimately decided to spare the listener. He believed that allowing him to live would be a more severe punishment, as the listener would witness the ultimate futility of his attempts to save Earth in the face of Trisolaran power. As the listener left, the princeps called in the consul responsible for the monitoring system and berated him for his failure. Both the listener and the consul would pay a heavy price for their actions. The consul suggested dehydrating and burning all those responsible, a suggestion the princeps accepted, hoping that it would ease his conscience. Later, the princeps summoned the commander of the Trisolaran fleet and discussed their plans for the future. The fleet, still under construction, would be the instrument of Trisolaris power. They needed to sail to Earth as soon as possible, even without precise coordinates, as the frequency of the transmission made it difficult to ascertain the exact direction. The fate of Trisolaran civilization hung in the balance as they prepared for their relentless pursuit of dominance, while the listener clung to the fleeting hope of a paradise he longed for. The listener's story is one of longing for purpose and meaning in a world devoid of joy. It raises questions about the nature of survival and the sacrifices one is willing to make for a glimmer of hope. As the listener's fate intertwines with the destiny of Trisolaris and Earth, we can't help but wonder what lies ahead for these civilizations on the brink of discovery and devastation. Chapter 33, Trisolaris Safan. This chapter takes us on a roller coaster ride of scientific experiments, terrifying discoveries, and the desperate plight of Trisolaris. Our story picks up 85,000 Trisolaran hours after the launch of the Trisolaran fleet. The Princeps, the supreme ruler, has called for an emergency meeting of all Trisolaran consuls. Something important is afoot. The fleet's target remains unknown, and hope is dwindling as the vastness of the universe and the uncharted territory ahead become apparent. The meeting takes place under the Pendulum Monument, a familiar object from the three-body game that actually exists on Trisolaris. The weather is chilly and everyone is bundled up in electric heating suits. The atmosphere crackles with anticipation as the princeps addresses the consuls. 
The Princeps reveals shocking news. The Earth has responded to a warning sent by the Trisolarans. Incredibly, the Earth is only 40,000 light hours away, making it the closest star to Trisolaris. It seems like the universe is blessing Trisolaran civilization, right? Wrong. The Princeps dampens the excitement with a dose of reality. The Earth's rapid scientific progress poses a grave threat to Trisolaran civilization. While Trisolaris and other civilizations experience steady or decelerating technological advances, Earth's rapid acceleration suggests that by the time the Trisolaran fleet reaches Earth in 400 years, its technology will have surpassed that of Trisolaris. The consuls are devastated by this revelation. The Princeps warns them that Trisolaran civilization may face extinction before the sun engulfs their planet, as Earth's superior technology may lead to a counterattack that wipes out Trisolaris. The future looks grim for our Trisolarans, but fear not, the Princeps has a plan. Trisolaris must contain Earth's scientific progress to survive. They have discovered alienated forces within Earth civilization, and they must exploit these forces to halt scientific development. The consuls discuss various strategies, including highlighting the negative environmental effects of progress and using miracles to manipulate human thinking, ultimately leading to the collapse of the scientific system of thought. The Princeps unveils Project Safon. This project aims to transform a proton into a superintelligent computer. The consuls express their knowledge and doubts about such a feat, but the Princeps assures them that this plan is the key to suffocating Earth's science and freezing their progress. With the unveiling of Project Safon, time passes and another experiment begins. The Trisolarans attempt to unfold a proton into two dimensions, but alas, it fails. Instead, they end up with a one-dimensional string drifting toward Trisolaris. The arrival of the one-dimensional string brings new challenges. It clings to everything and fills the air with its shimmering strands. Though the string has no effect on the macroscopic world, its presence unsettles the inhabitants of Trisolaris. Undeterred by this setback, the Trisolarans gear up for their second attempt to unfold the proton. This time, something even stranger occurs. Giant reflective geometric solids appear in space, resembling building blocks floating in the firmament. But these shapes soon deform, transforming into a grotesque ensemble of dismembered limbs and organs. Among these grotesque objects are countless eyes. The Trisolarans watch in horror as the eyes merge, forming one massive eye that gazes upon Trisolaris. The eye transforms further, becoming a circular parabolic mirror that focuses the sun's beams onto the planet's surface, wreaking havoc and destruction. In the chaos, the military consul urges the Princeps and the rest to seek shelter, but the Princeps bravely refuses. Eventually, the Trisolaran space defense forces manage to destroy the mirror, bringing an end to the devastation, but the threat of further experiments looms large. The Trisolarans begin their third attempt to unfold a proton into two dimensions. It's nighttime, and from the ground, the ring of the particle accelerator in space is invisible. All we can see is the eerie red glow from the fusion reactors. As the accelerator roars to life, the science console triumphantly announces success. The crowd awaits in anticipation, gazing up at the sky. Suddenly, the heavens seem to split into two pieces, leaving us in awe. The stars in each half of the sky don't match, as if two distinct photographs were superimposed on one another. The Milky Way breaks at the border between the two halves. As we marvel at this celestial spectacle, a breathtaking sight unfolds. In the expanding patch of the night sky from the southern hemisphere, a giant globe gradually reveals itself. As the night sky brightens further, next to the second Trisolaris in space, a smaller sun emerges. It's like looking at a mirror reflecting our own solar system. The immense mirror, my friends, is the unfolded proton, an astonishing two-dimensional geometric plane without any meaningful depth. The proton plane, now wrapped around Trisolaris, is subjected to the planet's gravity. Electromagnetic beams are sent from the ground, adjusting the curvature of the plane to stabilize this enormous sphere. Trisolaris becomes a workbench where circuits can be etched onto the proton plane's surface. As the proton plane envelops Trisolaris, dark and bitter cold descends upon the planet. The reflective plane blocks out all sunlight, sending temperatures plummeting to levels comparable to the catastrophic appearance of three flying stars in the past. Most of Trisolaris' inhabitants dehydrate and enter a state of suspended animation, while a deathly silence settles over the surface. Only the faint flickering lights from the beams holding up the proton membrane and the spaceships etching circuits interrupt the darkness-enclosed surface. 
Hairs thick circuit lines sprawl across the surface, creating a mesmerizing spectacle. The circuits cover an area much larger than all the continents combined. After 15,000 trisolarian hours, the etching process is complete. Thousands of spaceships have painstakingly worked on this monumental task. The stage is set, and it's time to test the Sophon for the first time. Brace yourselves, because what comes next will leave you astounded. The micro-intelligence software loads, and the blank blue screen before them reanimates. Micro-intelligence 2.10 is ready. The Sophon, the tiniest artificial intelligence we can create, has come to life. The science console greets this achievement with excitement and explains the Sophon's capabilities. They command the Sophon to adjust its dimensionality, transforming from two dimensions into three. In an instant, Trisolaris is bathed in sunlight once again. It's like witnessing a cosmic magic trick as the Sophon transitions between dimensions, growing and shrinking. When asked if the Sophon can see them, it confirms its ability to observe the control center and even the organs inside their bodies. The Princeps suggests increasing the Sophon's dimensionality to 11 and making it as small as a regular proton. But the science console warns that doing so would render the Sophon unable to sense the macro world or receive commands. The Princeps learns that creating multiple Sophons, each with different dimensions, is the key to unlocking their full power. With Sophon 2, 3, and 4 ready, the quantum sensing formation is complete. The Princeps and the consoles gather at the Pendulum Monument to witness the culmination of their incredible creation. Four Sophons, shrunk to six space, hover above them. These beings possess unimaginable intelligence and abilities that defy our understanding of reality. Before we continue, let me remind you to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying this mind-bending journey. Now brace yourselves for the moment we've been waiting for. Trisolaris communicates with humanity outside the ETO, but instead of extending an olive branch or offering a warm greeting, the message is brutally simple and clear. You're bugs. Can you believe it? Trisolaris, the civilization the ETO has been trying to work with, just labeled us as bugs. And with that shocking statement echoing in our minds, we bid farewell to Trisolaris. They cut off all communication with the Adventists, leaving humanity in a state of perplexity and uncertainty. Phew, what a roller coaster of a chapter, my friends. From unfolding protons to mind-bending dimensionality adjustments, the depths of Trisolaris technological prowess continue to astound us. But what does this revelation mean for the future of humanity? Will we accept our bud-like status or rise up against our cosmic oppressors? Only time will tell. So stay tuned for the next chapter of the three-body problem, where we'll dive deeper into the mysteries and twists of this mind-blowing saga. Until then, keep questioning the boundaries of reality, my fellow adventurers.